And we are back. Bears franchise. We're going to quickly sign Max Williams to the active roster. He's going to be our new tight end addition. We're going to make temporarily. Uh, with David Njoku being injured, I feel like it's a big thing to get a tight end who I feel like is capable of being on this team. In the last episode, as you can see, we ended up beating the Seahawks 31 to 10 to improve our record to be six and one, which is still joint with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals as they did end up winning their game. But that's the move we're gonna make. We're done, all right? We're past the trade deadline now. We elected to not make any trades. Uh, we have a cold opponent, the winless Cardinals, uh, who we're actually, unfortunately, going to skip over. So I really hope we don't lose this game. It'd be very, very concerning if we did. Uh, but without further ado, let's, we're going to skip right to the Ravens game is what's going to happen. And we end up winning, and the Bengals lose. So we finally have are leading the division. We've won seven in a row. Uh, we lost week one to the Bengals. That's the reason why they have the tiebreaker over us. And we finally, and I mean finally, uh, get f the lead in the division. Even if it's just for one week, man. Seven to three. Oh, my that's concerning. What we do need to go ahead and do, however, is uh, go with a weekly strategy. We're going to upgrade our players first, however. Okay, there we go. We're going to upgrade them. We're going to go over a weekly strategy, and then we're going to look at our injury, see if we need to bring in any guys uh, if in case anyone got injured. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be pretty obvious about it. We're just going to contain the quarterback scramble. And same here. We're going to go for the blitz counter. I feel like they could real Oh, rush for 200 is not happening. Uh. Lamar well, feels very likely to throw an interception. I hope I didn't jinx it. Uh. The big issue right now is we are suffering a lot of injuries. I just saw someone had an ACL sprain. That is fantastic news, man. David Njoku's fine. He got injured last uh, time against the Seahawks. Uh, Anthony Walker and Jerome Ford are both out. So... Oh, we are. We definitely have an injury problem. I believe we have two running backs and one middle linebacker on the roster now. So, we're gonna hope that none of our running backs or our middle linebacker get injured this game. Or else we might be screwed. M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Baltimore Ravens. Chicago beats Carolina by two. DJ Moore beats his former team. And we are going to get ball to start the game. It's a very good kick. Electing to take the kneel. Jerome Ford as well, I also just now remembered, is our return man. So this is going to be very interesting as well to see how... I know Donovan Peoples-Jones is our, I want to say, punt returner. Here is Sean Lofton so far this season. Uh, as our punt returner, I'm curious to see how he does as a kick returner if he is going to be the one to take over that role, which I have a feeling he will be. First play is going to be a pass by Watson. It's going to be complete. That is Elijah Moore, who's going to get a gain of nine and a half. Roquan Smith making the tackle. Just short of first down, I reckon just a run with Nick Chubb will get it done. Miles Sanders rushed for over 200 yards. Told you Nick Chubb will get it as he gets a gain of nine on the first rush. 
Ooh, Indianapolis and New England playing each other. One and eight versus two and seven. Houston and Cincinnati playing each other. We're rooting for Houston in that game, obviously. San Fran and Jacksonville playing each other. We're going to be rooting for uh, San Fran. Mari Cooper on the catch. That's going to be a gain at 13. Minnesota and New Orleans, we really don't care. Uh, Green Bay and Pittsburgh, we're rooting for Green Bay. And Donovan Peoples-Jones down to the 30-yard line. What a catch. Another gain of 13 there. Tennessee and Tampa, we're going to be rooting for Tampa in that case. Atlanta, Arizona. I really don't care. Honestly, I'm probably rooting for Arizona in that game just because, you know, I want them to win a game. Nick Chubb last week had a very solid outing. 85 yards on the ground. That is just over four yards a carry. Going outside is Chubb. He's going to get the first down. Gain of eight there. As we enter the red zone, Detroit and LA Chargers, we're going to be rooting for Detroit. Like I said, uh, we're going to be rooting for the NFC teams every game, pretty much. Uh, and if it's AFC versus AFC, we're probably going to root for the team with the worst record. Unless if they are playing, well, excuse me, uh, unless if it is a division team. Watson down to the three-yard line. It's going to bring up first and goal. Like the Jets and the Raiders, we're probably going to root for the Jets. Bills, Broncos, uh, I really don't know, honestly. Five and three versus six and three are pretty much the same record. Looks like the Bills haven't had their bye week yet, so probably, honestly, root for the Bills. That one. As Nick Chubb fights his way into the end zone, and we're going to strike first. I want to say that might be, honestly. Our first opening drive touchdown we've had this series. I feel like we've really struggled uh, to begin games. But, I mean, we did that. So, like I said, we're probably going to root for the NFC team every time. If it's AFC versus A uh, AFC, then uh, we're going to root for the team with the worst record. Uh, unless if it's, a, you know, like a division game. Uh... In a scenario with, you know, Cincinnati, we're rooting for the Texans. But say the Texans uh, had one loss on the season. We root for the Texans over the Bengals with two. Uh, unless if it's a team like the Steelers, man. Because the Steelers aren't doing anything this year. They've really struggled. I'm not very concerned about them so far. And J.K. Dobbins gets a gain of 14 on his first rush. Great job by him there. As you know, I feel like we were playing for the read option uh, for the quarterback, and it just didn't happen. Going right back to him. He's going to make a man miss, but he's also going to lose four yards. Still averaging five to carry with that, though. Great job uh, for our defense for sniffing out the run. We know how the Ravens are. They love running the football, whether it's designed or not. As you can see, Lamar Jackson probably was going to try and scramble out, but that's going to be a loss of 10. Great job, Zadarius Smith. We have a priority alert. Pittsburgh takes a 7-0 lead over Green Bay. Come on, Green Bay. Burn in 24. I doubt they get it, but they do not. There was arguably P.I. there. But gonna not call it. I'm not going to complain. You get the ball. We're probably going to get around the 45. Death to the 48. Donovan Peoples Jones. Uh, I really don't know what the future holds for him because more than likely he's not going to be returning next year. Sean Watts is going to lose two and a half uh, as Wormley and someone else get credit for Hapsack. Don't know why he tried to scramble there, but now I know it's going to be a run for Chubb. No, it's a pass. Quick one to DPJ, cross midfield to the 49. This brings up third and seven. This is this is manageable, but not very easily. But a lot, or excuse me, Mari Cooper down to the 28 is going to help us out. Picking up the first down. As we do have to call at least one more play before uh, the end of the quarter.
going to be a quick pass. Jordan Atkins, who's going to get into the end zone. Oh, we're going to take a two-score lead right before the end of the quarter. Jordan Atkins with a 28-yard touchdown off of a check down screen. The extra points by Dustin Hop Hopkins is good. Oh, I got the hiccups. That kick did not look very good. It's not. Field it at the four. Going to be returned up to the 26-yard line with 22 seconds left. The Ravens are going to be getting the ball. They have a negative one total yard so far. This is what I like to call a great job by the defense. It's going to be a handoff to J.K. Dobbins. He's going to take it up to the 30 for a gain of four. And that's probably going to do it for the quarter. There's J.K. Dobbins as well last week getting 60 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and it is going to do it for the quarter. We lead 14-0. Ravens have the ball at their own 30. There are the stats for those of you who are curious. Going to go right back to J.K. Dobbins. Darius Smith having an amazing game. Going to be a loss of... However much that was. Houston leads 3-0 over the Bengals. Let's go. Third down, Lamar. Rolling out. Throwing off the back foot. And it's going to be intercepted. And there's that goal done. Getting tripped up by Zay Flowers. Greg Newsom with the interception. And we're going to get the ball at our own 43 now. Greg Newsom had a lot of running room as well if he didn't get tripped up. Hand off to Nick Chubb. He's going to fight across midfield. Going to be just short of the first down. Gain of nine to the 48 across midfield. A Patriots lead 7-0 over to Saints. Go and play action. Over the middle, Amari Cooper catches it down to the 31. Bring up a first down. Harrison Bryant going to get a gain of three up to the 24. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to be second tight end out of Harrison Bryant and uh, Max Williams. As Deshaun's first incompletion, it's just a bad throw. San Fran leads 10-0 over Jacksonville. I'd, Im uh, over Jacksonville. I'd imagine that... And that's going to be intercepted at the 15. Ronald Darby, once again, Sean Watson with another bad throw. That one leading in an interception. Saints lead 3-0 over the Vikings. I'd imagine that Harrison Bryant would be the, uh, the backup tight end. Well, in this scenario, because uh, he's normally third string, both the David and Joe injury. Listen, Max Williams has to play for his job. A read option. Lamar is going to get a first down. False forward. That's six. Max Williams has to play for his job, man. Uh, once David Njoku, you know, returns. So that gives Zay, or that's Rashad Bateman up to the 41. Ravens starting to get some momentum going. Tennessee leads 7 0 over. The Bucks, because once uh, David Njoku's back, Max Williams or uh, Harrison Bryant is going to be cut. Lamar just has plenty of running. He's going to slide after a gain of six, and it's probably going to be Max Williams. Max Williams has to play, and he might not even play much, but he's got to play in order to you know keep his job. Or else there's no real reason for him to be around. Third and two now from the 49. They're probably going to run it. I was right. But it's going to work out. And Rashad Bateman almost got to the edge. Down to the 39. Kevin Zeitler. One of the Ravens' alignment. 
go down with an injury. Great first down there. That was a gutsy play call, and I really did like it. Amar on the design run. That's going to be a loss to two. Zazarius Smith has played one heck of a game so far. Two tackles for a loss. Well, technically three. I believe he has that in the, like, two tackles for a loss and the sack. Third and nine now. This is also going to be a long field goal. They do have Justin Tucker, so that shouldn't be an issue. Third and nine now from the 38. Lamar has time. It's going to be dropped by Odell and Tyler Linderbaum. Their center goes down from injury. I believe that's their center and right guard now. Uh, Kevin Zywer, the right guard, being injured. This would be a 55-yard field goal attempt for Tucker, and it is... Automat oh he missed what Jaguars closed the gap now only down three ten to seven I also brought us to a two-minute warning Nick Chubb's gonna get a nice gain of two here's the thing with the Sean Watson all right he's played amazing so far besides those two bad passes if he just works that out the one I wasn't even upset with uh where he just missed Amari Cooper. But he had a gimme. And he somehow turned that into an interception. Green Bay leads 14-7 over Pittsburgh. You'll have to see it. Third and eight now. That's going to be behind Amari Cooper. And unless it's Sean Watson got injured on a play or something. He is playing horrific now. Four of his last five passes were incomplete. And that's a horrible punt. That's going to be out at like 25. Oh, what can he do, genius? On the dot. Checks it down to Isaiah, likely to tight end. Somehow managing to hold on to that. Only a gain of three. But those gain of threes add up. Mark Andrews somehow holding on to that. Gain of two. Over the middle, he has Zay Flowers down to midfield. The rookie receiver picking up the first down and giving Baltimore life for points. On the run, it's going to be picked off by Sion Taki Taki. It's going to get down to the 38-yard line. There we go, baby. Cincinnati takes a 7-6 lead over Houston. Let's go. I imagine we're more than likely getting a field goal. Unless if, you know, Deshaun plays like Deshaun. It's going to slide down at the 32. We're going to burn our first time out. I respect it. Pittsburgh puts a field goal now, 17-10. to 10. Donovan Peoples-Jones drops that. Are you serious? I get Marlon Humphrey's a great corner, but you had him beat. And that was right on the money by Deshaun. Going to be a screen pass. It's going to be a first down and a lot more down to the 17. We're going to burn our second time out with 31 seconds left. We have one remaining. Sean checks it down to Nick Chubb. And once again, that's the third drop this half. You got to catch these, man. That's just a smart throw, honestly. I think he would have lost yards if he caught it, so that avoids grounding. Third and 10 from the 17. Don't force it, man. I'd rather a field goal. Although he's going to scramble for the 17-yard touchdown. We're going to take a free score lead right before half. Granted, there is 17 seconds left, and, well... But Dustin Hopkins, I feel like he's going to allow them to have a, a return, so. We're in a great spot going in the half if we manage to hold them off. Ravens do get ball to start second half, so if they score a touchdown here, which they're not going to, great job. There. Uh, whoever that was. Going to be a read at, or a, a read option with Lamar. That game's going to go nowhere. We've locked him up so far. 
That's going to do it for half. Upset alert, we're not going to see. That's going to do it for the first half. The Cleveland Browns lead 21-0 here at a stats. For those of you who are curious, we have dominated in both categories. Even though we've only had four extra snaps than them. Now we're going to take a look around the lead to see how everyone else is doing. Starting out, we're going to be heading to... Cincinnati, where the Bengals are down 13-7. Joe Burrow with a touchdown and an interception to touchdown to Jamar Chase. C.J. Stroud with a touchdown, which went to Robert Woods. Next, we're heading to Tampa, Florida, where the Buccaneers trail 14-0. Baker Mayfield with an interception. Derrick Henry with two and the only two touchdowns of the game for both sides. Finally, we're heading to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the Packers lead 14-10. Jordan Love with an interception. And Najee Harris with a touchdown. Both quarterbacks really struggling. 9 for 19 and 7 for 14. Here are plays of the half. We have the Nick Chubb fight forward. And we're going to have the... Uh, this one makes so much sense. The Jordan Atkins... What was it? 28-yard touchdown run? Like screen pass? Remember, Ravens do get ball to start second half. Devin Duvernay breaking the tackle, but only going to get up to the 18 with it. Upset alert was the Texans. I figured it would either be that or the Steelers. First and 10. Going to be a read option. It's a Darius Smith yet again. Playing it perfectly. Loss of four. Darius Smith should win player of the week defensively in the NFC. No, or in the AFC, excuse me. No doubt about it in my eyes. Lamar's going to get a huge carry. A pancake block. He's going to make a man miss. He's still going down to the 42-yard line. Just because it resulted in a loss of four and it hasn't really worked at all this game doesn't mean you stray away from it just yet. You're down 21. You should be trying everything. And that's Odell down to the 41, getting a huge gain. If you're a Ravens, you probably aren't trying to settle for a field goal because one, Justin Tucker missed from, you know, Justin Tucker range. And two, field goal still going to keep it a free score game. Saints lead 10 7 over the Vikings. Green Bay scored a field goal, now leading 17 10 with touchdown lead. Third and eight, Sion Takitaki with the one on the tackle. Third and eight, Lamar's going to look. It's going to be incomplete. If Lamar puts that throw in a good spot, that's easily caught. Tennessee lead 17-10 over the Buccaneers. This would be a 56-yarder for Justin Tucker. And this kick is going to be good. And the Ravens' first points of the game comes from, you know, I'd argue a Hall of Fame kicker. Maybe even the best kicker of all time in Justin Tucker. He may have missed his first kick, but he delivers the second time. And not a very good kick for him. But a great job as he only gets to 22. I was not able to see who that was on the kick return. I'm actually very curious on who it is, though. Because they're playing in place of, you know... Jerome Ford. A great block by Harrison Bryant. And Nick Chubb has a lot of running room down to the 40. But they're probably coming back due to holding. holding. And it is going to be on Wyatt Teller, the right guard. That's going to be a loss of eight since, you know, we had two yards from where the foul occurred. Nick Chubb going to get up to the 19. Gain a five, and if he would have broke Kyle Hamilton's uh, tackle, he probably would have gotten a lot of yards. Watson on second down is going to be sacked. Michael Pierce, or Matthew Pierce, I'm pretty sure it's Michael, but well, loss of five, bringing third and 18 back up again. Let's just avoid a safety or a turnover here. Sacked again, Michael Pierce again. Going to be a loss of one. I'm cool with it. But let's not 
fold. Yes. You hear the announcers, a free and out. This is a banger punt. Going to be returned up to around the 48, though. 47-yard line, they're going to say. Devin DuVernay was the returner. Uh, I feel like this drive is going to be the dagger if Baltimore puts up no points. That's incomplete. Denzel Ward had a better chance of catching it than the intended receiver. It was so far off. New England leads 14-0 over the Colts now. Houston's still leading 13-7. Lamar in second down, just hitting Mark Andrews. He's the safe option. Gain of six. I would say Mark Andrews is the second best tight end in the league behind Travis Kelsey. Some people would argue George Kittle. I unfortunately just don't see the George Kittle hype uh, anymore. J.K. Dobbins got up to the 35 with that. That was a gain of 12. Going to be a handoff to him now. It's only going to be a gain of one. That's going to take us to under two minutes remaining in the quarter. Going to be another handoff to him. J.K. Dobbins is going to get a lot more yards and foul... And falls forward. Going to be a gain of seven up to the 27. Third and two. I imagine they go read option. I was right. And we're going to get the tackle. And he's not. He's going to lose two. Fourth and four. They're going to send the field goal unit out there for a 46-yard field goal attempt. Pittsburgh ties it up as well. Green Bay at 17. Tucker. Drills it, and it's now a 15-point game. Now, that's only two scores now. So, Baltimore has definitely, you know, closed the gap. Electing to return it out. That looks like Donovan Pe Oh, that's number 20. That's Greg Newsom. Wait, no, it's not. Uh, Greg Newsom, zero. He used to wear 20. I have no idea who 20 is. Oh, that's Pierre Strong. So we have the backup running back taking, well, the third string running back taking place. It's a gain of two. Cleveland has to call one more play before the quarter ends. Tennessee dominating, man. 24 to nothing. And Jordan Atkins drops it. He had a first down, but the ball came out, man. Wasn't able to survive the ground. Third and eight, I'd say if there's something there, take it. And Marlon Humphrey with the beautiful pass deflection. He had Donovan Peoples Jones wide open. And this Ravens team has come alive in the second half. Not allowing a single point. It's been two free and outs as well. They have, there's one second left, so. They're of course going to. Hand it off, but J.K. Dobbins manages to get a good gain of six out of it. And with eight minutes left to go here in the stats, for those of you who are curious, Cleveland's still winning. They're doing a solid job on defense, allowing only field goals, but with eight minutes left, Baltimore's only down two scores. Do not count Baltimore out of this game quite yet. And he had Zay Flowers wide open, but missed him. The Ravens have been so good this season on passing yards. They're in the top 10, but they haven't even eclipsed 100 yet. Third and four now from the 45. This is a huge third down. And it's going to be incomplete. Just missing him again. And on fourth and four, they got to go for it, it feels like. And if they don't get this, this is setting Cleveland up with prime, you know, Field position. And Zay Flowers is unable to hold on. And Cleveland takes over at the Baltimore 45. And I'd say a field goal would end this game. It would bring it back to three scores in the fourth. Yeah. Nick Chubb fighting forward. Only going to get a gain of three. But I love the effort. He's only got seven carries on the game. 17-3 now the Patriots lead. 
Jordan Atkins gets it. He's going to get up to around the 37, bringing up third and free. If we don't get it, punt the football. Houston leads 21-7. Bless you. Sean Watson on the read option. He has the first down, and he holds on to the football to the 31. That was a beautiful play call. Fight fire with fire. The Ravens have been running it pretty much all game. They were not expecting us to do it. Jacksonville leading 14-13. to 13. They've been trailing the whole game. Rock is in with amazing coverage. Mari Cooper had, you know, a step or two, but, I mean, it didn't matter. It was just because it was able to be bad down. Jordan Atkins is going to be close to a first down game of seven. Free short. St. Louis 17 7 over the Vikings. Third and free. We run this football, in my opinion. If we don't get it, we just take the field goal. I trust our kicker from this range. And it's a fumble! And we recover it. Nick Chubb gets back on the football. It's going to be fourth and short. And we're going to go for it. I actually like this call a lot. This would be the dagger, in my opinion. Going to be a screen pass. DPJ is going to be short. He maybe just maybe got it at the initial, you know, attempt, but no. I really love the the play call and like, and that's going to be intercepted, so it doesn't even matter. J O K Jeremiah Alusu Koromoa. It's still not a dagger yet because there's still five minutes and Baltimore still has all free time after they're going to have to start burning them soon. Gain it to by Nick Chubb. Donovan people's Jones, that's the second time he's dropped a pass because Marlon Humphrey just had great hit. Third and eight, run the football. Like Nick Chubb run. Or Donovan Peoples-Jones can go ahead and make up for his mistake and get the first down. And we're definitely in field goal range now, so. Unless they, you know, did what they did last time and force us or enforce like a turnover on downs or an interception. Or a turnover, I should say. Uh, we win this game. Or we missed a field goal. That too. That will be a turnover on downs, technically. Watson's still playing to, like, to do well. He's going to get the first down up to the 13. And I think we're going to win this game. I'm pretty, pretty positive. We're chewing clock now and everything. Priority or... Pittsburgh takes a 24-17 win, or a lead, excuse me, over Green Bay. Elijah Moore, he's got some room to run. He's going to be tackled out of bounds, which will be stopping the clock. But it is going to be a huge game, game of eight. Nick Chubb handoff, 99 right there to stop it. That is Adase Owe. Third and five now. That will take us to a two-minute warning. All right, this is probably the biggest third down of the game. A first down, I think, ends it. No doubt in my mind. Or a touchdown, I should say, as well. If we manage to get a touchdown. He's going to be sacked. Baltimore's going to take their first time out. 4th and 10, the 30-yard field goal would end the game if he drills it. Dustin Hopkins, the kick is good. And we take a, how much is it, 18-point lead, which is free scores. With under two minutes left to go in the 4th, we win this game. They're going to have to score an immediate touchdown, force a free now with their timeouts, score another touchdown or field goal, and then uh, rely on an onside kick. So it's technically not over. There's still, you know, of course, a possibility. There's like it's not over until the clock hits zero. And even then, sometimes it's not over with defensive penalties and stuff. But they got a 0.1% chance. 
Cincinnati trying to get back in their game down only seven now, 21-14. Oh, Dell's unable to hold on to it. Third and ten. Let's go defense. You got two plays in you. I'm saying this because, well, the sooner you get this this stop, you got one more play in you. The sooner you can be off the field and done for the game. Fourth and ten. They need ten yards to not only keep the drive alive, but the game alive. Lamar. Pressured. Throwing. It's going to bat it down by Grant Delpit. And we're going to win this football game. I doubt they take their timeouts. Let's go. And if they do decide to take their timeout, which they're not going to, a first down would end it. Dick Chubb had a horrible game today. He's not even averaging three yards a carry. He's going to need at least five yards to average three yards a carry in this game. And he is going to get it. Uh, Pittsburgh probably wins over Green Bay, 31-17. Find it hard for them to lose it. And we're going to win this game in a great, great, great performance. 24-6. to six. We allowed two field goals in the third quarter. That was it. We see John Harbaugh and Darren Moody meeting. Great game by Deshaun Watson, man. Great game by literally everyone. The offense, the defense. Well, special teams could have done a bit better, but we're not going to complain about that. We were missing Jerome for the, the you know, returner after all. And Jeremiah Wusu Kormo, we're going to manually upgrade you since you're the only one here. We're going to give you Speed Rusher. Speed Rusher. That doesn't do anything, but it is going to give you plus three finesse moves. As in the next episode, we're going to uh, watch the Steelers game because it's a division game. We watch them no matter what. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and, and advance week now. See if we got any player of the week. I'd imagine maybe we no really. We're gonna go over that prospect spotlight next week. Thank you, Houston. That's our Houston baby. They get the the job done. Sean Murphy Bunning beat us, man. Are you serious? That should have. All right. I do want to see, uh, what Sean Murphy Bunning's stat line was. Oh, five tackles, two interceptions. Yeah, that makes complete sense why he got it. I'm not even going to argue. Obviously, the one game we did deserve, I don't know where it is. This one right here. Six tackles, four sacks, and two forced fumbles. That game, no question about it. The Ravens have a very good defense, it appears. The Titans got player of the week in week 10 with Derrick Henry and Sean Murphy Bunning. So that's good for them as well. All right, but that's going to do it for... Uh, well, look at our stats. Sean Watts is not doing great, but everything else is fine. Nick Chubb's doing amazing. Defensive yards first. Makes sense. Points scored. We're struggling, but that's also because we play eight-minute quarters compared to everyone else. 
points allow. We're doing very solid, I'd say. I mean, no doubt in my mind we are. We're 8-1. and one. We're one win away from being above 500. Uh, we're going to wait until week 13 to check out the playoff picture. I don't know how Denver's doing. I'm not going to look at standings or anything. Actually, where is Denver? We can look here. They're 6-3, and three, so we're probably going to watch that game. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did just a quick thing. I'm recording this on Wednesday. Uh, if you want, you can go watch my predictions video to uh, kind of hear my explanation. But I do work today. Today is my first day ever of like being employed. Uh, and, you know, I am going to be working for the next six weeks. Uh, so expect videos to decrease, specifically this series. Uh, I, I'm working a minimum of six weeks, I should say, unless if I get fired, which I really hope I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm just working for the Halloween season. Uh, I'll work longer if I enjoy it and they decide to, you know, want me back. It's literally a temporary job. So we're going to, after the six weeks, we're going to kind of just see where that takes me. But, uh, yeah, I work today. I'm off on tomorrow on Thursdays, but I'm not going to be making a video then because, one, Packers play, go Pack Go, and two, tomorrow, Thursday, is the one year anniversary of my cat trapper dying, so you know, I'm going to take it easy. Uh, and yeah, but I am working Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which really does suck for video making. This will go out Friday, I believe. It could be early, it could be late. I don't know when I'm working Friday. It's either going to be like in the morning or like late at night, depends on you know what my hours are. Uh, so yeah, and it really does suck because I'm working Sunday and. I'm going to be able to watch the, the morning game, but that's about it. I'm going to have to, like, ear on Monday or whatever my next, you know, day off is. I really do hope I don't work Monday. Uh, I don't know what the schedule is after that. I only know, you know, the four days. Uh, I'm going to have to watch highlights and stuff and look at the stats, which is what I normally do for the games I don't watch. But... I'm going to have to do this for literally every game except two of maybe three. It depends on, you know, the Monday night game as well. Th three games. Potentially. So that's going to be 13 games I have to look at highlights for. And stats, which is 26 teams. That's going to be a lot. So if my power rankings and predictions and stuff do suck, just understand I'm legit losing, you know, Insight for the week on, you know, the teams. Uh, but that's going to do it. Sorry for wasting your time. Hope you guys enjoyed. I did. This should, as you're watching this, will be out Friday. So, just imagine this, you know. As I'm, like, talking about my work, you know. Two days before, to Wednesday and Thursday. And then, you know, every day after that is after. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed. I did. I don't know when the next time I'll upload is. It'll either be Tuesday or Wednesday uh, at the latest. Uh, and if it is, uh, there's a good chance I'm going to have to upload power rankings and predictions all four, the two, you know, regular and the two shorts, uh, all on the same day. So, you know, power rankings will go out first, obviously, and then it'll be power rankings, you know, and then predictions. And there's a chance, you know, predictions will go out on Tuesday as well if I'm working, you know, a lot Wednesday. I'll see you guys next time. Sorry for rambling. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed.